This is Revelation chapter 6, and uh, let me speak on chapter 5 a little bit, and then we'll get into chapter 6. So, people are in heaven in chapter 5, and they're singing, uh, they're singing about the Lamb of God, who's the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, right? And they're, and they're, they're singing about Christ, and they're saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation and hast made us unto our God kings and priests and we shall reign on the earth. Um, about us becoming kings and priests, uh, uh, that's there's a reference to that in, I forgot if it was First Peter or Second Peter. I think it was Second Peter, but it's one of the, it's one of the, the epistles of Peter. But anyways, um, you know, and saying with a loud voice, worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive power and wisdom. So the lamb, the lamb, the lamb, Jesus Christ, okay. So when we get to Revelation chapter 6, It starts off with Jesus Christ, who's the Lamb. Jesus Christ is opening the seals. Okay, he opens the first seal. That's how Revelation 6 starts. Now, some people think that, like, the first half of the tribulation is, like, Satan's wrath. And then, this, and then the second half is God's wrath. Um... But no, it's not the devil that's opening up the seals. It's Jesus that's opening up the seals. And uh, let me point out some things in Revelation chapter 6. So he opens the seals. And um, by the time he gets to the... Uh, by the time he gets to the fifth seal in the same chapter... Um, you know, a quarter of the world is already dead, okay? So one-fourth of everybody dies by, by the time we get to the fifth seal. Um, even before, I mean, the fourth seal, and then, you know, a, a quarter of people die, okay? And he keeps opening seals, and then, you know... More crazy stuff starts happening, and verse 15 of Revelation 6, it says, And the kings of the earth, and the great man, and the rich man, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, and every free man hid themselves in the dens, and in the rocks of the mountains, and said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us, and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb. For great... For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? So, again, we're not appointed to wrath as, uh, you know, as Christians. People in, in, the, in the church that are saved, uh, that are believing in Jesus Christ alone for their salvation. And so... You know, to me, Revelation chapter 6 is one of the greatest proofs, and the, there's many, I've, I've come to learn that there's many. Um, you know, when I was first Christian, I was post-trib and pre-RAF, and then I come to realize how foolish that position is. Um, but Revelation 6 is, is, is one of the greatest reasons uh that and some passages in, in Daniel, um, why I believe in the preacher of rapture and I believed in the preacher of rapture uh, of the church, probably close, maybe two years now. But uh, anyways, Jesus Christ opens the seals and then in the middle of the chapter, a quarter of people on earth are already dead. 
at the end of the chapter, it's people yelling about the wrath of God. You're going to tell me that this isn't the wrath of God? It's obviously the wrath of God, okay? And we're not appointed to wrath. So, <laughs> the church obviously is not in Revelation chapter 6. And, you know, some people... Um, you know, so, some people say that uh, Revelation 4.2 proves the preacher rapture. That never satisfied my curiosity because, you know, that... This is John in the spirit and the rapture. Everybody's going to go up and our bodies are going to be ch changed in you know, twinkling of an eye. And uh, it's our bodies will go up as well, okay? So that I wouldn't say this is proof of the rapture. But an interesting thing is in Revelation 4, um, these 24 elders... They're casting crowns before the throne, saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for Thou hast created all things, and for Thy pleasure they are and were created. And so, um, the crowns, I, 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 would, uh, I would think they would receive at the judgment seat of Christ, and... Uh, the judgment seat of Christ does not happen until the church is up there in heaven. Um, so even though the church isn't ex explicitly mentioned in Revelation 4, I do believe the church, uh, by the time you know these events happen in Revelation 4, I believe the church is up there somewhere. But certainly... By the time Revelation 6 um, rolls around that time frame, there's no way the church is on earth in Revelation 6. Because, again, it's not the devil that's opening up the seals. It's Jesus Christ. And a quarter of people die in, Re in Revelation 6. You know, that's billions of people. And you're, you're going to tell me that's not the wrath of God? And, and then, again, Revelation 6 ends with people screaming about the wrath of God. Okay. Um, so, if you've never put your faith in Jesus Christ, I encourage you to do so. Uh, he died for all your sins. He lived a perfect, sinless life. He lived a life you and I could never live. And... Um, you know, while we're yet sinners, Christ died for us. And for God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son, whosoever believeth on Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And whosoever, that's, that means anybody. That's great news, because for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. It's not by righteousness which we have done, it's by uh, His mercy that, that Jesus saved us. And... Uh, we have redemption through His blood, even the forgiveness of sins. And that precious blood was shed on the cross. And uh, He paid for all your sins. He doesn't do a half job. He is the Savior. Uh, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thine house.